Hello! I'm going to talk about noun clauses. Specifically, when I'm teaching noun clauses, how do I lead up to them and connect to the big picture? And then I'm going to go over a project that I use to contextualize noun clauses and all the clauses that we cover in level, level 3 grammar. So this is my progression from the beginning to almost the end of the semester. Um, so I start with parts of speech and sentence positions. And then we really cover um, very explicitly where can you put nouns in a sentence. So we cover that nouns can be subjects, objects, complements, or objects of the preposition. And that really prepares us well to talk about gerunds and infinitives and then later noun clauses. So when I'm leading into gerunds and infinitives, we go over that nouns and pronouns have three positions. They can go before the verb in subject position. They can go after the verb, which could be object position or complement position, depending on your type of verb. And then after a preposition, the object of the preposition. So in subject position, you could have a noun or a pronoun. You can have a few words with the noun, a noun phrase, or you could have a gerund or a gerund phrase. Um, I don't really cover um, infinitives and subject position at this level. We keep it a little bit more simple. So I give them examples with a noun as a subject, like John, a noun phrase as a subject, his soccer game, and then a gerund or gerund phrase as subject, playing soccer. When we talk also about after the verb, in object or complement position, we have all the same players, right? So here is a noun as an object, basketball. Here's a noun phrase as an object, hard work and dedication. Here's a gerund as an object, winning, and infinitive as an object, to win her next game. And then finally, we talk about after a preposition, I talk about the word object of the preposition, kind of go back and forth so they remember what that means um, and remind them that a prepositional phrase always ends with a noun. So that noun could be just a single noun, could be a noun phrase, like at their game, or it could be a gerund. They're respected for being great athletes. So at this point, I feel like after we lead in that way, they're really ready to understand gerunds and infinitives. So I spend time covering them. And then later on in the semester, we start working on clauses. So another progression that happens over the semester, move my head here, um, is covering the sentence types. So closer to the beginning, we cover simple and compound sentences. And then I cover complex sentences and point out that there's different types. So we have complex sentences with adverb clauses, then we lead into complex sentences with noun clauses, and then after that <coughs> I follow it with noun clauses with adjective clauses. So that's the order of events that has worked well for me. So my process of teaching noun clauses themselves is that I start with an overall introduction that connects noun clauses to that previous work on sentence positions. And then I go through more specifically noun clauses with that, noun clauses with reported speech, and noun clauses with question words. So I'm not going to go into detail about all these things, but I just want to show my introduction. So this is from my Canvas page for um, for Grammar Three because I teach a hybrid class. A -a -h. <laughs> My tough dog. So when I'm introducing noun clauses, I remind them. A. <laughs> that we're working on complex sentences and that there are these three types. And that right now we are on number two. Complex sentences with noun clauses. And it's always important to review, you know, that a dependent clause and an independent clause together make a complex sentence. 
and that a noun clause is a type of dependent clause, so it can't be a sentence alone. And then I point out that the noun clause is doing the job of a noun, just like we previously looked at for gerunds. Gerunds and infinitives, but even more so for gerunds. So in here, what he did, our noun clause, um, is the subject of the sentence. So we look at the different words that noun clauses can start with and go over some examples together so they get a little bit of practice. Then on my Canvas course, you could easily adapt this to be in class as well. They do calls it a quiz. Canvas calls anytime you ask questions a quiz, but it's just a noticing activity. They can take the quiz, you know, a hundred times if they want to, and they can see the answers after their first time. So it's really just helping them start to identify where the noun clauses are in the sentence. And then go in here, questions. So they have to find the noun clauses for the first few questions. And then after that, they have to decide what is the noun clause doing in the sentence. So what is the job of that noun clause? Is it a subject? Is it the object of the preposition? Or is it the object? So right from the beginning, we're connecting noun clauses to what they already know about sentence structure. So that's what's really worked for me. And then as I'm teaching all the clauses, but noun clauses specifically, I really focus on um, the belief statement project. So leading up to the belief statement project, I use different um, things from the This I Believe project from NPR. So we listen to different people talking about what they believe. We read the transcripts of different people's belief statements. And so I'm going to show you a few examples of how I use that all the way along to lead up to our belief statement project. So when we're practicing with that clauses, we read this um, lovely belief statement by Allah about America's beauty is in its diversity. So she talks all about this experience she had, being worried that students wouldn't like her because she looked different, and how she really didn't have that problem. She felt very included and cared for. So then the students use that story to write about her experience. What does Allah believe? She believes that. She was afraid that. She remembers that. So I have to go back and use that story to use noun clauses. Then I notice that students often get a little bit tripped up between believe that and believe in. So I have them compare and contrast similar sentences using both structures. Same thing with proud that plus noun cause or proud of plus noun. So when we're doing that, we're reviewing all the different things that can come after prepositions, right? So they're reviewing their gerunds after prepositions, their nouns after prepositions. So it's a good moment for recycling all the stuff that we've covered up until this point. And then they talk about themselves, what they believe, what they're afraid of, what they're proud of, but they use both those structures. So they're going to answer the question using a noun clause and then using a preposition plus a noun. So I believe that versus I believe in. I'm afraid that versus I'm afraid of. So they get used to going back and forth between those two things. Then when we're doing reported speech, we use a lot and other examples um, from the same This I Believe project where they have to read about um, these people's stories. And then they choose sentences or passages from the reading to explain with reported speech. So in this case, they had to explain what Allah said using a noun clause 
with reported speech, and then they have to explain why they chose it. So they're also getting some good academic work there, giving their uh, choosing something and then giving a, a reason or their justification for doing it. So that's when we're covering reported speech. Then after we've covered noun clauses all together, so we've done uh, reported speech, we've done question words, and we've done that clauses, then I give them my belief statement. So they have to read my belief statement, and then they have to find the noun clauses and categorize them. So what, what category do they fall under? And then after they've seen a bunch of examples of belief statements already and analyzed them, I give them their assignment of writing their own belief statement. So you really have to explain that you want them to talk about something really deeply important to who they are. Otherwise, they'll say things like, I believe in speaking English in class. But we want them to choose something bigger, more important to really talk about their morals or who they are as people. So they do some discussion in class about what could be good topics to focus on. Um, we also, in the online class, um, use that as a topic for online discussions. And then I give them a model. I tell them that I want these four parts. They explain what they believe. They give one example or experience that shows that belief, a second one and then some kind of conclusion at the end. And then I explicitly say you need to use clauses. So at this point, we've covered adverb clauses, noun clauses, and adjective clauses. So I tell them I want to see at least three, three, and three, and they have to highlight them for me so that I can find them. So they can use colors on their printed version, or they can do it online. Either way, and then they submit their belief statements and we end up doing two drafts. And at the end, I actually ask them to make a video and then we share the videos with the whole class. It ends up being a lot of fun, I think, and pretty meaningful. So that is the way that I cover noun clauses. Um, I can definitely add anyone to my Canvas shell for the Grammar 3 class if you want to see the assignments that I have on there. Um, or you can contact me directly. I can send you anything. Um, all the handouts I'll also add to the Grammar Community of Practice shell. All right. I hope that's helpful.